Next chapter of this course is, the UK government, the law, and your role. In this chapter, you will learn how the UK is governed. You need to understand the Queen's role in a government, and her powers. Make sure you understand, how people are appointed to the two Houses of Parliament, and the specific roles detailed, such as the Speaker and Cabinet, and your rights to vote, and stand for election. In this chapter there is information about Britain as a constitutional monarchy How Parliament works Elections, the government, and the opposition Devolved administrations of the UK The Commonwealth, EU, UN and NATO British law, and justice The courts Fundamental principles, and rights Tax Driving Community work, and getting involved the first topic of this chapter is, the British Constitution. The development of British democracy. Democracy is a system of government where, the whole adult population gets a say. This might be by direct voting, or by choosing representatives to make decisions on their behalf. In the 1830s, and 1840s, a group called the Chartists campaigned for reform. They wanted six changes. First. For every man to have the vote. Second. Elections every year. Third, for all regions to be equal, in the electoral system. Fourth, secret ballots. Fifth, for any man to be able to, stand as an MP. Sixth, for MPs to be paid. At the time, the campaign was generally seen as a failure. However, by 1918 most of these reforms had been adopted. The voting franchise was also extended to women over 30, and then in 1928 to men, and women over 21. In 1969, the voting age was reduced to 18 for men, and women. Constitutional Institutions In the UK, there are several different parts of government. The main ones are 1st. The Monarchy 2nd. Parliament 3rd. The Prime Minister 4th. The Cabinet 5th. The Judiciary, Courts 6th. The Police 7th the civil service. 8th. Local government. The monarchy. Queen Elizabeth II, is the head of state of the UK. She is also the monarch, or head of state for many countries in the Commonwealth. The UK has a constitutional monarchy. This means that the king, or queen does not rule the country but appoints the government, which the people have chosen in a democratic election. The monarch invites the leader of the party, with the largest number of MPs, or the leader of a coalition between more than one party, to become the Prime Minister. The monarch has regular meetings with the Prime Minister, and can advise, warn, and encourage, but the decisions on government policies, are made by the Prime Minister, and Cabinet. The National Anthem The National Anthem of the UK is, God Save the Queen. It is played at important national occasions, and at events attended by the Queen, or the Royal Family. The first verse is, God save our gracious Queen. Long live our noble Queen. God save the Queen. Send her victorious, happy, and glorious. Long to reign over us. God save the Queen. New citizens swear, or affirm loyalty to the Queen as part of the citizenship ceremony. Oath of Allegiance. I, name, swear by Almighty God that on becoming a British citizen, I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. Affirmation of Allegiance I, name, do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare, and affirm that on becoming a British citizen, I will be faithful, and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. Next, we will discuss about, system of government. The system of government in the UK, is a parliamentary democracy. The UK is divided into, parliamentary constituencies. Voters in each constituency elect their, member of parliament in a general election. All of the elected MPs form, the House of Commons. Most MPs belong to a political party, and the party with the majority of MPs forms the government. The House of Commons. The House of Commons is regarded as, the more important of the two chambers in parliament because its members, are democratically elected. MPs have a number of different responsibilities. They represent everyone in their constituency. They help to create new laws. They scrutinize, and comment on what the government is doing. They debate important national issues. The House of Lords Members of the House of Lords, known as peers, are not elected by the people, 
and do not represent a constituency. The role, and membership of the House of Lords, has changed over the last 50 years. Until 1958, all peers were hereditary, which means they inherited their title, or senior judges, or bishops of the Church of England. The Speaker. Debates in the House of Commons, are chaired by the Speaker. This person is the, Chief Officer of the House of Commons. The Speaker is neutral, and does not represent a political party, even though he, or she is an MP, represents a constituency and deals with constituents problems, like any other MP. The Speaker is chosen by other, MPs in a secret ballot. Elections. MPs are elected at a general election, which is held at least every five years. If an MP dies, or resigns, there will be a fresh election, called a by-election, in his or her constituency. MPs are elected through a system called, first past the post. In each constituency, the candidate who gets the most votes is elected. The government is usually formed by the party, that wins the majority of constituencies. If no party wins a majority, two parties may join together to form a coalition. Contacting elected members. All elected members have a duty to serve, and represent their constituents. You can get contact details for all your representatives, and their parties from your local library, and from www.parliament.uk. MPs, Assembly members, members of the Scottish Parliament, and MEPs are also listed in the phone book, published by BT, and in yellow pages. The next topic of this chapter is, the government. The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister, PM, is the leader of the political party in power. He or she appoints the members of the cabinet and has control over many important public appointments. The official home of the Prime Minister is 10 Downing Street, in central London, near the Houses of Parliament. He or she also has a country house outside London called Chequers. The Cabinet The Prime Minister appoints about 20 senior MPs to become ministers in charge of departments. These include Chancellor of the Exchequer, responsible for the economy. Home Secretary responsible for crime, policing and immigration. Foreign Secretary, responsible for managing relationships with foreign countries. Other ministers, called Secretaries of State, responsible for subjects such as education, health and defense. The Opposition. The second largest party in the House of Commons is called the Opposition. The leader of the Opposition usually becomes Prime Minister if his or her party wins the next general election. The leader of the opposition leads his or her party in pointing out what they see as the government's failures and weaknesses. One important opportunity to do this is at Prime Minister's questions, which takes place every week while Parliament is sitting. The leader of the opposition also appoints senior opposition MPs to be shadow ministers. They form the shadow cabinet and their role is to challenge the government and put forward alternative policies. The Party System Anyone aged 18 or over can stand for election as an MP but they are unlikely to win unless they have been nominated to represent one of the major political parties. These are the Conservative Party, the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats, or one of the parties representing Scottish, Welsh or Northern Irish interests. There are a few MPs who do not represent any of the main political parties. They are called independents and usually represent an issue important to their constituency. The main political parties actively look for members of the public to join their debates, contribute to their costs, and help at elections for parliament or for local government. They have branches in most constituencies and hold policy-making conferences every year. Local Government Towns, cities and rural areas in the UK are governed by democratically elected councils, often called local authorities. Some areas have both district and, county councils, which have different functions. Local authorities provide a range of services in their areas. They are funded by money from central government and, by local taxes. Many local authorities appoint a mayor, who is the ceremonial leader of the council. In some towns, a mayor is elected to be the effective leader of the administration. Who can vote? The UK has had a fully democratic voting system since 1928. The present voting age of 18 was set in 1969 and, with a few exceptions, all UK-born and naturalised adult citizens have the right to vote. Adult citizens of the UK, and, citizens of the Commonwealth and, the Irish Republic who are resident in the UK, can vote in all public elections. Adult citizens of other EU states who are resident in the UK, can vote in all elections except general elections. The Electoral Register To be able to vote in a parliamentary, local or European election, you must have your name on the Electoral Register. 
If you are eligible to vote, you can register by contacting your local council electoral registration office. This is usually based at your local council, in Scotland it may be based elsewhere. If you don't know which local authority you come under, you can find out by visiting www.aboutmevote.co.uk and entering your postcode. You can also download voter registration forms in English, Welsh and, some other languages. The electoral register is updated every year in September or October. An electoral registration form is sent to every household and, this has to be completed and returned with the names of everyone who is resident in the household and eligible to vote. In Northern Ireland a different system operates. This is called individual registration and, all those entitled to vote must complete their own registration form. Once registered, people stay on the register provided their personal details do not change. For more information see the Electoral Office for Northern Ireland website at www.oni.org.uk. By law, each local authority has to make its electoral register available for anyone to look at, although this has to be supervised. The register is kept at each local electoral registration office, or council office in England and Wales. It is also possible to see the register at some public buildings such as libraries. Where to vote? People vote in elections at places called polling stations, or, polling places in Scotland. Before the election you will be sent a poll card. This tells you where your polling station or, polling places and, when the election will take place. On election day, the polling station or, place will be open from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. When you arrive at the polling station, the staff will ask for your name and, address. In Northern Ireland you will also have to show photographic identification. You will then get your ballot paper, which you take to a polling booth to fill in privately. You should make up your own mind who to vote for. No one has the right to make you vote for a particular candidate. You should follow the instructions on the ballot paper. Once you have completed it, put it in the ballot box. If it is difficult for you to get to a polling station or polling place, you can register for a postal ballot. Your ballot paper will be sent to your home before the election. You then fill it in and, post it back. You can choose to do this when you register to vote. Standing for office Most citizens of the UK, the Irish Republic or, the Commonwealth aged 18 or, over can stand for public office. There are some exceptions, including Members of the armed forces Civil servants People found guilty of certain criminal offences Members of the House of Lords may not stand for election to the House of Commons but, are eligible for all other public offices. Next, topic of this chapter is, the UK, and international institutions. The Commonwealth The Commonwealth is an association of countries that, support each other, and work together towards shared goals in democracy, and development. Most member states were once part of the British Empire, although a few countries which were not have also joined. The Commonwealth is based on the core values of democracy, good government, and the rule of law. The Commonwealth comprises 54 countries, across all continents. Some of the, Commonwealth members are Antigua and Barbuda Australia India South Africa Kenya United Kingdom Next topic of this chapter is, the European Union. The European Union, originally called the European Economic Community, was set up by six Western European countries, who signed the Treaty of Rome on March 25, 1957. The UK originally decided not to join this group, but it became a member in 1973. There are now, 27 EU member states. Croatia will also become a member state in 2013. Some of the European Union, member states are, United Kingdom, Australia, Belgium, Sweden, Germany, Ireland, Northern Syrup, Austria, the Council of Europe. The Council of Europe is separate, from the European Union. It has 47 member countries, including the UK, and is responsible for the protection, and promotion of human rights in those countries. It has no power to make laws but, draws up conventions, and charters, the most well known of which is the European Convention, on Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, usually called the European Convention on Human Rights. Next, the United Nations. The UK is part, of the United Nations, an international organization with more than, 190 countries as members. The UN was set up, after the Second World War, and aims to prevent war and promote international peace, and security. There are 15 members on the UN Security Council, which recommends action when there are international crises, and threats to peace. 
the UK is one of five permanent members of the Security Council, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The UK is also a member of NATO. NATO is a group of European and North American countries that have agreed to help each other if they come under attack. It also aims to maintain peace between all of its members. Next topic of this chapter is respecting the law. The law in the UK. Every person in the UK receives equal treatment under the law. This means that the law applies in the same way to everyone, no matter who they are or where they are from. Criminal law relates to crimes, which are usually investigated by the police or another authority such as a council and which are punished by the courts. Civil law is used to settle disputes between individuals or groups. Examples of criminal laws are carrying a weapon. It is a criminal offense to carry a weapon of any kind, even if it is for self-defense. Drugs, selling or buying drugs such as heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, and cannabis is illegal in the UK. Racial crime, it is a criminal offense to cause harassment, alarm or distress to someone because of their religion or ethnic origin. Selling tobacco, it is illegal to sell tobacco products, for example, cigarettes, cigars, roll-up tobacco, to anyone under the age of 18. Smoking in public places, it is against the law to smoke tobacco products in nearly every enclosed public place in the UK. Buying alcohol, it is a criminal offence to sell alcohol to anyone who is under 18, or to buy alcohol for people who are under the age of 18. Examples of civil laws are Housing law, this includes disputes between landlords and tenants over issues such as repairs and eviction. Consumer rights, an example of this is a dispute about faulty goods or services. Employment law, these cases include disputes over wages and cases of unfair dismissal or discrimination in the workplace. Debt, people might be taken to court if they owe money to someone. The police and their duties. The job of the police in the UK is to protect life and property, prevent disturbances, also known as keeping the peace, prevent and detect crime, the police are organized into a number of separate police forces headed by chief constables. They are independent of the government. The police force is a public service that helps and protects everyone, no matter what their background or where they live. Police officers must themselves obey the law. They must not misuse their authority, make a false statement, be rude or abusive or commit racial discrimination. If police officers are corrupt or misuse their authority, they are severely punished. If something goes wrong, the police complaint system tries to put it right. Anyone can make a complaint about the police by going to a police station or writing to the chief constable of the police force involved. Complaints can also be made to an independent body, the Independent Police Complaints Commission in England and Wales, the Police Complaints Commissioner for Scotland, or the Police Ombudsman for Northern Ireland. Terrorism and Extremism The UK faces a range of terrorist threats. The most serious of these is from Al-Qaeda, its affiliates, and like-minded organizations. The UK also faces threats from other kinds of terrorism, such as Northern Ireland-related terrorism. All terrorist groups try to radicalize and recruit people to their cause. How, where, and to what extent they try to do so will vary. Evidence shows that these groups attract very low levels of public support, but people who want to make their home in the UK should be aware of this threat. It is important that all citizens feel safe. This includes feeling safe from all kinds of extremism, vocal, or active opposition to fundamental British values, including religious extremism and far-right extremism. If you think someone is trying to persuade you to join an extremist or terrorist cause, you should notify your local police force. The role of the courts. The judiciary. Judges, who are together called the judiciary, are responsible for interpreting the law and ensuring that trials are conducted fairly. The government cannot interfere with this. Sometimes, the actions of the government are claimed to be illegal. If the judges agree, then the government must either change its policies, or ask parliament to change the law. If judges find that a public body is not respecting someone's legal rights, they can order that body to change its practices, and or pay compensation. Judges also make decisions in disputes between members of the public, or organizations. These might be about contracts, property, or employment rights, or after an accident. Criminal Courts Magistrates and Justice of the Peace Courts In England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, most minor criminal cases are dealt with in a magistrate's court. In Scotland, minor criminal offences go to a Justice of the Peace Court. 
Magistrates and Justices of the Peace JPs, are members of the local community. Magistrates decide the verdict in each case that comes before them and, if the person is found guilty, the sentence that they are given. In Northern Ireland, cases are heard by a district judge or deputy district judge. Crown Courts and Sheriff Courts In England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, serious offences are tried in front of a judge and a jury in a Crown Court. In Scotland, serious cases are heard in a Sheriff Court with either a Sheriff, or a Sheriff with a jury. The most serious cases in Scotland, such as murder, are heard at a high court with a judge, and jury. A jury is made up of members of the public chosen at random from the local electoral register. In England, Wales and Northern Ireland a jury has 12 members, and in Scotland a jury has 15 members. Everyone who is summoned to do jury service must do it unless they are not eligible, for example, because they have a criminal conviction, or they provide a good reason to be excused, such as ill health. The jury has to listen to the evidence presented at the trial, and then decide a verdict of guilty, or not guilty based on what they have heard. In Scotland, a third verdict of not proven is also possible. If the jury finds a defendant guilty, the judge decides on the penalty. Civil Courts County Courts County courts deal with a wide range of civil disputes. These include people trying to get back money that is owed to them, cases involving personal injury, family matters, breaches of contract, and divorce. In Scotland, most of these matters are dealt with in the Sheriff Court. More serious civil cases, for example, when a large amount of compensation is being claimed, are dealt with in the High Court in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. In Scotland, they are dealt with in the Court of Session in Edinburgh. The Small Claims Procedure The Small Claims Procedure is an informal way of helping people to settle minor disputes without spending a lot of time and money using a lawyer. This procedure is used for claims of less than £5,000 in England and Wales, and £3,000 in Scotland and Northern Ireland. The hearing is held in front of a judge in an ordinary room, and people from both sides of the dispute sit around a table. Legal Advice Solicitors Solicitors are trained lawyers who give advice on legal matters, take action for their clients, and represent their clients in court. There are solicitors offices throughout the UK. It is important to find out which aspects of law a solicitor specializes in, and to check that they have the right experience to help you with your case. Many advertise in local newspapers, and in yellow pages. The Citizens Advice Bureau can give you names of local solicitors, and which areas of law they specialize in. The next topic of this chapter is, Fundamental Principles. Britain has a long history of respecting an individual's rights, and ensuring essential freedoms. These rights have their roots in Magna Carta, the Habeas Corpus Act, and the Bill of Rights of 1689, and they have developed over a period of time. British diplomats, and lawyers had an important role in drafting the European Convention on Human Rights, and Fundamental Freedoms. The UK was one of the first countries to sign the convention in 1950. Some of the principles included in the European Convention on Human Rights are First, right to life Second, prohibition of torture Third, prohibition of slavery and forced labor Fourth, right to liberty and security Fifth, right to a fair trial Sixth, freedom of thought, conscience, and religion Next, equal opportunities UK laws ensure that people are not treated unfairly, in any area of life, or work because of their age, disability, sex, pregnancy, and maternity, race, religion, or belief, sexuality or marital status. If you face problems with discrimination, you can get more information from the Citizens Advice Bureau, or from one of the following organizations. First, England, and Wales. Equality and Human Rights Commission. Second, Scotland. Equality, and Human Rights Commission in Scotland, and Scottish Human Rights Commission. Third, Northern Ireland. Equality Commission for Northern Ireland. Fourth, Northern Ireland Human Rights Commission. Domestic Violence. In the UK, brutality and violence in the home is a serious crime. Anyone who is violent towards their partner, whether they are a man or woman, married or living together, can be prosecuted. Any man who forces a woman to have sex, including a woman's husband, can be charged with rape. There are emergency telephone numbers in the helpline section at the front of yellow pages, including, for women, the number of the nearest women's center. You can also phone the 24-hour National Domestic Violence Freephone Helpline on 0808-2000-2000.
24-7 at any time, or the police can help you find a safe place to stay. Forced Marriage A marriage should be entered into with the full and free consent of both people involved. Arranged marriages, where both parties agree to the marriage, are acceptable in the UK. Forced marriage is where one or both parties do not or cannot give their consent to enter into the partnership. Forcing another person to marry is a criminal offence. A potential victim, or someone acting for them, can apply for an order. Anyone found to have breached an order can be jailed for up to two years for contempt of court. Taxation First, Income Tax People in the UK have to pay tax on their income, which includes Wages from paid employment Profits from self-employment Taxable benefits Pensions Income from property, savings and dividends Money raised from income tax pays for government services such as roads, education, police and the armed forces. Second, National Insurance Almost everybody in the UK who is in paid work, including self-employed people, must pay national insurance contributions. The money raised from national insurance contributions is used to pay for state benefits and services such as the State Retirement Pension and the National Health Service NHS. Last topic of this chapter is, your role in the community. Values and Responsibilities Although, Britain is one of the world's most diverse societies, there is a set of shared values and responsibilities that everyone can agree with. These values and responsibilities include To obey and respect the law To be aware of the rights of others and respect those rights To treat others with fairness To behave responsibly To help and protect your family To respect and preserve the environment To treat everyone equally, regardless of sex, race, religion, age, disability, class or sexual orientation To work to provide for yourself and your family To help others to vote in local and national government elections. Being a good neighbor. When you move into a new house or apartment, introduce yourself to the people who live near you. Getting to know your neighbors can help you to become part of the community and make friends. Your neighbors are also a good source of help. For example, they may be willing to feed your pets if you are away, or offer advice on local shops and services. You can help prevent any problems and conflicts with your neighbors by respecting their privacy and limiting how much noise you make. Also try to keep your garden tidy, and only put your refuse bags and bins on the street or in communal areas if they are due to be collected. Getting involved in local activities Volunteering and helping your community are an important part of being a good citizen. They enable you to integrate, and get to know other people. It helps to make your community a better place, if residents support each other. It also helps you to fulfill your duties as a citizen, such as behaving responsibly and helping others. How you can support your community jury service as well as getting the right to vote people on the electoral register are randomly selected to serve on a jury anyone who is on the electoral register and is aged 18 to 70 can be asked to do this helping in schools if you have children there are many ways in which you can help at their schools parents can often help in classrooms by supporting activities or listening to children read many schools organize events to raise money for extra equipment or out of school activities Activities might include book sales, toy sales or bringing food to sell. You might have good ideas of your own for raising money. Sometimes events are organized by parent-teacher associations PTAs. Volunteering to help with their events, or joining the association is a way of doing something good for the school, and also making new friends in your local community. You can find out about these opportunities from notices in the school, or notes your children bring home. Supporting political parties Political parties welcome new members. Joining one is a way to demonstrate your support for certain views, and to get involved in the democratic process. Political parties are particularly busy at election times. Members work hard to persuade people to vote for their candidates, for instance, by handing out leaflets in the street, or by knocking on people's doors, and asking for their support. This is called canvassing. You don't have to tell a canvasser how you intend to vote, if you don't want to. British citizens can stand for office as a local councillor, a member of parliament, or the devolved equivalents, or a member of the European Parliament. This is an opportunity to become even more involved in the political life of the UK. You may also be able to stand for office, if you are an Irish citizen, an eligible Commonwealth citizen, or, except for standing to be an MP, a citizen of another EU country. You can find out more about joining a political party from the individual party websites. Helping with local services 
there are opportunities to volunteer with a wide range of local service providers, including local hospitals, and youth projects. Services often want to involve local people in decisions about the way in which they work. Universities, housing associations, museums, and arts councils may advertise for people to serve as volunteers in their governing bodies. You can volunteer with the police, and become a special constable or a lay, non-police, representative. You can also apply to become a magistrate. You will often find advertisements for vacancies in your local newspaper or on local radio. You can also find out more about these sorts of roles at www.gov.uk. Blood and Organ Donation Donated blood is used by hospitals to help people with a wide range of injuries and illnesses. Giving blood only takes about an hour to do. You can register to give blood at England and North Wales, www.blood.co.uk Rest of Wales, www.welshblood.org.uk Scotland, www.scotblood.co.uk Northern Ireland, www.nibs.org Many people in the UK are waiting for organ transplants. If you register to be an organ donor, it can make it easier for your family to decide whether to donate your organs when you die. You can register to be an organ donor at www.organdonation.nhs.uk. Living people can also donate a kidney. Looking after the environment. It is important to recycle as much of your waste as you can. Using recycled materials to make new products uses less energy, and means that we do not need to extract more raw materials from the earth. It also means that less rubbish is created, so the amount being put into landfill is reduced. You can learn more about recycling, and its benefits at www.recyclingnow.com. At this website, you can also find out what you can recycle at home, and in the local area if you live in England. This information is available for Wales at www.wasteawarenesswales.org.uk, for Scotland at www.recycleforscotland.com and, for Northern Ireland from your local authority.